Hiya folks, I'm Steve Judd. I'm a professional astrologer with 35 years consultative experience. And these are my astrological forecasts for each sign of the zodiac for the year 2014. Enjoy. And this is my global forecast for the year 2014. Uh, big picture job, all right? I've got this big responsibility for me to do this one. Well. I'm trying to encompass what I see is coming up in the whole of 2014 in the space of five minutes. So I'm going to have to talk astro babble to an extent. And the big picture is that the Uranus Pluto square continues in intensity, ever so slightly decreasing as we get more and more towards the end of the year. But it is the big picture and the ongoing degree of transformation that's happening, particularly in the lives of those people born in the first week of, I don't know, January, April, July, September, but echoing out into the whole world. And this is ongoing. Particular key points in this will be the start of January, at this Capricorn New Moon on the 1st of January, and the middle 10 days of April when the Mars-Jupiter Grand Cross with Uranus-Pluto really kicks in. But as Mars leaves Libra and Jupiter leaves Cancer come July, we should see that the intensity of this year really starts to decrease as we get into the second part of the year. Neptune and Chiron are doing fine in Pisces, not causing any large-scale problems apart from the lives of those people born towards the end of the first week of Pisces, Virgo, Gemini and Sagittarius, but for that you'll have to see the individual sun signs. But Neptune is not affecting the larger planetary picture at this time, at least not in a big way that causes me cause for concern. Similarly, Chiron also not making major conjunction or opposition. Saturn at the end of Scorpio. Since we've had Saturn in Scorpio, the last time this happened in 1983-4, we saw we saw a the uh, either the death or the rebirth of of the Cold War and nuclear war potentials. We saw the beginning of a breakdown of of the Russian state, uh, the communist regimes, and we also saw, of course, the onset of HIV, AIDS, and sexual disease awareness and issues around sexuality coming up. This time round with Saturn in Scorpio, we've seen the more sordid side, the corrupt side of all the paedophilia, the sex crimes that's happening. There's so many evidence of, of all the lies and deceit that's coming to the surface, and this will continue in 2014. As we draw towards the end of the year, Saturn begins to leave Scorpio and move into Sagittarius, and perhaps, just perhaps as we get towards the very end of 2014, instead of the critical self-examination of morals that society seems to be going through and the, the judgmentalism of old standards of behaviour compared to current constructs, instead perhaps as we get more towards the end of the year and Saturn moves into Sagittarius, we might start looking at the judicial, illegal, background to this and the procedures behind this and start restructuring our notion of law, of legality and perhaps with Sagittarius the notion of the structures and boundaries of religion as well. But that's towards the end of the year. Jupiter in Cancer in the first half of the year, not doing too much by the time we're into May onwards, basically. I think that's a fair thing to say. By the time we're into May, Jupiter's influence is steady, growthful, expansive for a lot of different people with no major problems. Similarly, I would quote the same on the Mars retrograde to an extent. The Mars retrograde that's happening in the first half of the year seems to be at its most proactive through to the end of February. And then upwards until early May, perhaps, it's in a retroactive time. It's reassessing and reevaluating. And I suspect that even though the middle of April, where a big grand cross occurs, does seem as a time where there's going to be a lot of actions and hot air, at the same time there's a lot of swords that are going to be kept deliberately sheathed at that time for use later. And when I say later, I think I mean the end of May, start of June, when Mars passes square to Pluto and then opposite Uranus again for the final time squaring Jupiter and by the time we're into the end of June it seems that 75 to 80 percent of the challenge of 2014 has been 
physically manifested. The repercussions, the results will change as the year goes on. But the hardcore actions seem to be done by the end of June. And the crazy thing is, is that in terms of real results and real developments, they don't really seem to start properly until early March. There's a lot of preliminaries going on in the first couple of months of the year which are setting the scene, but the real concentrated period of compressed change as far as the planet globe goes in terms of economic, militaristic, political environments, the manic time to me is mid-March through to early July. And I do expect some major changes in all of these areas at this time. The danger of warfare over the coming year, especially in the first six months of the year, is high. Not mega high, but high. And it will be religious warfare. It won't be based on economy or oil as it has been in the past. The economic situation of the world continues with Uranus Pluto, but it's still it's unstable. Unstable. And uh, the, the whole idea of continued uh, mega profit for for a uh, faceless shareholder at the expense of starving populations and environmental degradation is unsustainable. So this is something that's going to become increasingly shaky and tenuous. The current boom in land and economy in certain countries at the start of 2014 will sustain itself through till the June-July period and then it will suddenly either burst or go very, very flat. And there will be a sudden shift in economic focus around the second, third week of July in a way that will change things dramatically. I do suspect there's going to be some quite dramatic news in the first three months, four months of the year around people leaving of quite significant and of certain states having a right go at each other. But by the time we're into May, we should be able to start predicting outcomes and by the time we're into August, we will be seeing outcomes. And the second half of this year, I, in all my clients, each year I look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different clients' charts. And as I approached the last few months of 2013, I was projecting forward for a lot of clients in the 2014. More and more, the message is clear. For 85 to 90% of people, by the time we're into the middle of June, end of June, it's all over by the shouting. And I think the second half of this year is going to be far more regular and, dare I say it, mature than the first half. The first half, 2014, from an astrological level, concerns me a little bit. And if I were talking to the globe and the planet as a client, I would be saying as far as 2014 goes, the second half is fine, but in the first half, please, have a negotiated and considered first half to 2014. There you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful and fun. Big thank you to all those people who have supported me over 2013, and I will continue to do my best to bring astrology to the world in 2014. My philosophy is clear. Astrology should be free. However, if you wish to make a small donation, there is a donate button. It keeps these videos going. So thanks, have a great year, and I'll be here all year. See ya, bye.